Hi guys, so I tested 30 mineral sunscreens in June and I'm here to share the results of that with all of you. I have some clear cut winners and some huge flops as well. And I also learned a lot doing this little, I guess, experiment, if you will. And it was pretty eye opening. So I wanna talk about all of that before I get into the actual products themselves and the best and worst. I just wanna quickly kind of explain why I decided to do this in the first place. So most of you know that I've had skin cancer twice and wearing sunscreen has become very, very important to me. But a lot of mineral formulas are thick and greasy or gritty. They leave a white cast and it's just, they're not very pleasant to use. And so as a result of that, I found myself not wanting to use them or I would skip sunscreen when I really should have been wearing it. And so I was looking for formulas that I really wanted to use that were gonna be a pleasure to use that had a thin texture that that didn't feel greasy or sticky and that didn't leave that notorious white cast for the days that I wasn't gonna be wearing makeup. And honestly, I got a lot of comments on all of these videos from people asking, why not just test Korean sunscreens because those are better. I get it, I actually love Korean sunscreens. They are all, at least all the ones that I've tried, very elegant, they sit well under makeup, they don't leave a white cast, they just are almost invisible in texture, and I love those. But because all of the ones I've tried have been so fantastic, I didn't feel like it was as needed to have reviews on those as it is mineral, because the mineral ones can be so tricky to find a good one, and I just felt like it's a little bit more necessary to test out the mineral ones so that you all don't waste your money on subpar formulas like I have countless times. So I guess I just felt like reviews of mineral sunscreens would be more helpful, especially for those who can't wear chemical or Korean formulas. So these could be people who are just more concerned about the environment because a lot of chemical formulas are not reef safe. It could be people who have allergies or their skin gets irritated by chemical formulas. I know I am somebody that that has happened to, not with with the Korean ones, but certainly with the American filters that are out there. So I don't like to use those. Another reason a lot of people are using mineral these days is because there was a study that came out, I think it was a year or two ago, that said that chemical sunscreen filters were found in the bloodstream. So those are going deeper than I guess they originally thought and they're getting into people's bodies and they haven't proven one way or the other whether that's harmful or it's not harmful, but I think it just kind to freak some people out because they're, you know, these haven't been studied long term being in the body and you don't know what's going to happen. That a lot of people are just turning to mineral formulas because those sit on top of your skin like a physical block from the sun's rays. So the sun comes down, hits the mineral formula, it's like a shield and just bounces right off. Whereas chemical formulas, they're thinner, they go down into the layers of your skin. And then when the sun's rays go into your skin, the chemical filter just breaks them up and sends them back out. So there are a lot of reasons why people would choose to wear a mineral sunscreen, but as I mentioned, they are often very thick, very greasy, hard to rub in. They can have a gritty texture and of course leave that notorious white cast. So that's why I wanted to do these tests. And another thing that I wanted to quickly mention before we jump into the actual sunscreens themselves is that I applied for each test the appropriate amount of sunscreen, which is a quarter teaspoon for your face, or an easier way to measure it is just the length of two fingers, a stripe on each one, which is a lot of sunscreen. It's more than I realized. And one of the things that I learned from testing all of these sunscreens is that some of the formulas I thought I liked, I actually don't because back then when I first started trying them, I was using maybe a pea size amount, just applying it like I would a moisturizer and that's not enough. If you apply half of the recommended amount, you're gonna get about half the SPF. So if it's 30, you're probably getting closer to 15 if you're just putting on a little amount. So like I said, there were some that I really used to like, but then once I applied the appropriate amount, I ended up rating them a little bit lower. You really want your sunscreen to go on like you're painting a wall. You don't want any patchiness. You wanna make sure you have a very even coverage and to do that, 
you need a little bit more than what you think you would. Also, while I was testing out these sunscreens, I inevitably on almost every video got a comment from someone saying that they don't like to wear SPF 30 because 50 is better. Now, SPF 30 is gonna be a little bit thinner. It's not gonna have as many of those downsides as the higher zinc oxide formulas for SPF 50. So the 30s are gonna be a little thinner. They're not gonna have as much white cast, etc. And this is also something that I actually learned. And I, like I said, I learned a lot during this. And SPF 30 and 50 are really not that much different. The SPF 30 formulas block 97% of the sun's rays. SPF 50 blocks 98%. So it's 1% difference as far as how much they filter out. Now, yes, it is true that SPF 50 is supposed to last a little bit longer. So that's gonna protect your skin 50 times longer out in the sun than if you had nothing. And SPF 30 is gonna protect you 30 times longer. So let's say you go out in the sun and you burn within a half an hour. That's kind of like how I am, right? So an SPF 30 technically, according to the label, would protect you for 30 times longer than that. So 30 times 30 minutes would be 900 minutes or 15 hours. Now, theoretically, SPF 50 would protect you for 1500 minutes or 25 hours. But again, this is totally misleading because every sunscreen on the planet says that you need to reapply it about every two hours to three hours. And this is because it breaks down with sweat, if you're swimming, just friction, and in general, the product itself, once it's on your skin, it just kind of starts to break down. So that was pretty eye-opening for me, knowing that there really isn't a whole lot of difference between SPF 30 and 50. All right, so all that being said, let's talk about my most and least favorites. Now, these actually may change a little bit because of something else that I learned that I'll get into kind of after I talk about these, but let's just go through the list really quick. So. 10 out of 10 formulas, I had six of them. So those were the Live Tinted Hue Guard sunscreen. This is the three-in-one moisturizer, primer, and sunscreen. Also the Herbivore Star Seed sunscreen. This is SPF 30. This is also SPF 30. The Bubble Plus One sunscreen. This is SPF 40. The St. Jane Luxury Sun Ritual Primer sunscreen. This made my skin look so smooth. It was really beautiful. This is SPF 30 as well. The K-Skin Mo Bay Mineral Sunscreen Drops. This is SPF 30. And the Hero Force Shield Super Light Sunscreen, SPF 30. And this is the one with the green tint to counteract redness. So all of these formulas were extremely light for a mineral formula, non-greasy, they sat well under makeup. They weren't difficult to rub in. They rubbed in kind of like a lotion or a moisturizer. They also did not leave a white cast on my skin tone. So these were the best of the best. These are formulas that do not feel like mineral sunscreens. They feel more like a chemical or a Korean one. So these were the absolute best of the best. There were also some that got a nine out of 10 rating for me and those were the In Beauty Project Mineral Sun Glow. This is SPF 43 the Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen from First Aid Beauty, and the Peter Thomas Roth Max Mineral Tinted Sunscreen. So all three of these, amazing as well. The only reason that these rated slightly lower than my 10 out of 10s were in the case of these two, the Peter Thomas Roth and the In Beauty. They were slightly thicker than my top picks. Not that they were difficult to rub in by any means, but they were just a little tiny bit and also a little bit harder to remove at the end of the night. And the First Aid Beauty one also, it's like super thin, very lightweight. It's almost like a serum texture, but it had this hint of a chalkiness to it that some of the other ones that were 10 out of 10 didn't have. So that's the only reason that I docked it a point, but otherwise it is a wonderful formula and I really love this too. Next for formulas that I rated eight out of 10, we had the Good Molecules Sheer Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30, the Vanny Cream Facial Moisturizer SPF 30, the Kopari Bright as Day Sheer Mineral Sunscreen, this is an SPF 50, the Coats Prime and Protect at SPF 40, this one is also a really great primer. The Hero Force Shield Super Beam and the Tatcha Silk Sunscreen. So these, for various reasons, I docked a couple of points. It could have been the color, it could have been a slight chalkiness, but these are also really great, better than average options. All right, then I had four options at seven out of 10. So we had the Sephora Collection Daily Sunscreen SPF 30, the Neutrogena Mineral UV Tint SPF 30, the Drunk Elephant Umbra Sheer Mineral Cream SPF 30, 
and the Supergoop Matte Screen SPF 40. So this one I rated a seven out of 10 under makeup, but without makeup, it's a 10 out of 10. I just rated it a little bit lower under makeup because it is so slick and slippery. It has kind of that moussey primer-like texture, but I found that sometimes my makeup doesn't stick to it very well and kind of slides around. So it makes your skin look absolutely beautiful and it actually kind of softens imperfections and blurs pores and all of that. So I like to just wear this alone on no makeup days and it just makes my skin look beautiful. So 10 out of 10 without makeup, but with makeup, it can sometimes be a little finicky and not play well. But otherwise these four were also above average. And then there were also two that I rated 6.5 out of 10, which were again, a little bit better than average. We had the Naked Sundays SPF 50 Collagen Glow and the Beekman 1802 Milk Primer. So this one, I just rated a little bit lower, even though it's a super nice thin texture, it does have a little bit of a white cast and it also has kind of a funky smell to it. And the Naked Sundays one is very thick, but at the same time, it made my skin look really nice. It kind of smoothed everything out almost like a primer. My makeup did end up sitting nicely on top of this, but it just feels heavy. Like you can kind of feel it on your skin throughout the day. So I didn't love the heaviness of it, but I love the way it makes my skin look. So again, I still think better than average. Then there was one that I rated right in the middle out of five out of 10. It was the CeraVe Hydrating Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. This one also, it's a little bit on the heavier, thicker side. It's a little bit greasy. So when I wear this, I don't wear a normal moisturizer. This is my moisturizer basically. That kind of helps cut down the greasiness a little bit, but overall, not really my favorite. Also, the tint is a little bit too deep for my skin tone, but it is very hydrating. It didn't pill under makeup. And once it actually sets down, it feels better. So it's not like the worst sunscreen ever, but not really my favorite. Oh, actually I forgot about this one. This is the Live Tinted Hugo tint skin tint so this I also rated a 5 out of 10 and compared to this one from live tinted which I rated 10 out of 10 I felt like this was so much thicker it's greasier it left kind of a film on my face it does have coverage whereas this one doesn't this one is lightly tinted but just enough to minimize the white cast it doesn't really cover anything this one is just a lot thicker and I didn't like the way it felt on my skin nearly as much as this one so I highly recommend and checking this one out from Live Tinted and just applying your own foundation over it versus trying to get the coverage out of this one because I don't know, I just didn't love the way that this one felt. Now we're getting to the bottom of the list. These were lower than average. So first we had the Iris and Romeo Weekend Skin SPF 50. This is a sunscreen, but it also has some skincare benefits. It has vitamin C and it also is supposed to have a glow. Now this one was kind of this funky mustardy yellow color and I also felt like it was a little bit on the thicker side and a little bit more greasy, so I rated this a four out of 10. The Innisfree Daily UV Defense. This is one that when I first tried it, this has a green tint to it. And when I first tried it, I thought it was thick, but I only applied a little bit and I thought it blended into my skin really nicely. But when I tried this on camera with the regular amount, the quarter teaspoon that you're supposed to use, it was a mess. It was so thick, it took forever to rub this in and it left me with a white cast. So I rated this one a three out of 10. The Kosas Dream Beam also got a three out of 10. This one just pilled under my makeup so badly and it was so thick and greasy as well. The Vanna Cream SPF 50 as opposed to the 30, which I actually really liked. This one is a lot thicker, again with the white cast, hard to rub in. And it almost felt like it had these little gritty pieces in the formula, so this one, I gave a two out of 10. Also two out of 10 were the Cora Organics Silky Sun Drops. This was like putting straight oil on my face and when you have to put a lot of it, it was just so greasy. I think I said in that video that I looked like a glazed donut. I really did. It took forever for this to sink in and nothing would stick on top of it. So it's definitely one that if I were ever to wear it again, I just would wear it alone and not under makeup and probably in the winter time when my skin is a little bit more dry. Then I had two that were one out of 10 and the Coco Kind Daily SPF 32 and the Fenty Skin Hydrovisor. So the Coco Kind was another one that was so hard to rub into my skin. It was greasy, it was chalky, it left a white cast. I absolutely had no desire to ever wear this one again. And the Fenty Skin one also, I felt like this made my skin itchy. Like it was so thick and almost felt like a mask. 
and it was so heavy that it felt like my skin couldn't breathe and I had this weird itchy feeling throughout the day. Again, this is another one that I just felt like I don't have any desire to wear this ever again because I just couldn't wait to get it off and it also was very difficult to remove. So those were my worst picks, but I did learn something that unfortunately has changed everything for me. Now, it was thanks to one of you commenting on one of these videos about a chemical called butyl octal salicate. So this is actually something that when I did the research, especially from Lab Muffin Beauty, she's on YouTube and also I think she has a blog as well, she explained this perfectly. So basically it has almost the identical chemical structure to octosalate, which is a chemical sunscreen that we use here in the United States. And it could be one of the ones that irritates my skin. Structurally, it's almost identical to it, but the FDA does not recognize it as a chemical sunscreen filter. Basically it just hasn't been tested for that. So companies are putting that in mineral formulas to help boost the SPF. That way they don't have to use as much zinc oxide to get that higher number. And then without too much zinc oxide, you have a lighter formula, one that feels nicer on your skin, but yet you're still getting that SPF number that you want on the label. So for example, a company can use maybe 9% zinc oxide in a formula when normally you need probably closer to like 20, 22%. You you can use a low amount and then slip this butyl octal salicylate in there and boost the number up. And then you still have a nice thin formula that people are gonna enjoy wearing. So I read this article that said that 50% of mineral sunscreens, ones that claim to be all mineral, actually have this in it. And when I went back through my list, I found out that 14 out of 30 of the ones that I tested do have this chemical sunscreen booster in them and therefore cannot be completely 100% classified as a mineral sunscreen. And I found that interesting because there were some formulas where people were commenting and saying, you know, this irritated my skin, it burned my eyes, which is kind of a classic hallmark of a chemical sunscreen. Usually the mineral ones don't burn your eyes as much. So going back through the list of my 10 out of 10s, the two that have this ingredient, I'll just say BS for short, is um, the Hero Force Shield Super Light and the Herbivore Star Seed. So these two do have it. In the nine out of 10 category, we have the In Beauty Project and the Peter Thomas Roth Max Mineral. These also have it. In the eight out of 10 category, the Good Molecules Sheer Mineral Sunscreen has it and also the Kopari Bright as Day and the Hero for Shield Super Beam. In the seven out of 10s, the Sephora Collection one has it as well. And in the five out of 10 category, the Live Tinted Hue Guard Tint has BS in it as well. Although funny enough, the original one that I really loved, the one that I rated 10 out of 10 doesn't have it unless there's something amiss with the ingredient list. But when I looked on the Ulta website, it does not show it for this, but it is in this one. I'm guessing it's maybe because this one is SPF 50 and this one's 30. So to boost up the mineral to 50, they had to use it to get that extra amount. And then funny enough, there were a lot of them in the under five out of 10 categories. So the Iris and Romeo Weekend Skin has it. The Innisfree Daily Defense has it. The Vanny Cream Mineral SPF also has it. And the Fenty Hydrovisor has it, which could also explain why this was making my skin feel itchy. So anything that I didn't mention, I did not see it in the ingredient list. I went through every single one. And I'm not saying that this ingredient is necessarily bad or it's gonna cause a lot of issues for most people, but I do want to put it out there because anyone who does have a sensitivity to chemical sunscreens may also react to this ingredient. So if that's you and you're buying one of these sunscreens because it says it's all mineral on the label, and a lot of these do say 100% mineral, but this ingredient is in there. They just don't have to put it in the active ingredient section where it says drug facts because here in the US, sunscreens are classified as drugs. So you have to list the filters that they're using as a sunscreen on the back of the package. And since that is not an approved sunscreen, it's not approved for that use. They put it in there just as an inactive ingredient, but it does boost the formula and help the SPF. So it's a very sneaky little tactic. So knowing this does change things for me a little bit, I'm gonna have to just Wait and see if some of my 10 out of 10 formulas that I wear often, like the um, Force Shield Super Light, if these start to bother my skin, then I'll know that that ingredient is probably the culprit. So far, I haven't had an issue, but I've mostly been wearing three other ones. These are probably the tip top of my list. If I had to recommend like the 
absolute best out of the best. I would say it has to be one of these two and I'm kind of leaning toward the bubble only because this one is also more affordable. The Live Tinted one, I want to say it's like $34 and this one I think was 16 or 17 at the drugstore. And I do think the Live Tinted is very similar to this, but it's more expensive. So I'm kind of like, why not just spend less and get this? They're both, I feel like, pretty equal. And another one of my 10 out of 10s that I had to mention, this one is more expensive. It's that St. Jane Pore Smoothing SPF 30. It's beautiful. It is such a nice formula under makeup. These do work well under makeup. They don't pill, but if you want that pore smoothing benefit, this is so nice and it doesn't have the chalkiness that the Tatcha one has and it's also not as expensive as that one. I think these are probably my top three with this one being number one. And just quickly, I forgot to mention this before, but the way that I prevented most of these from pilling is to let them sit for a while before you apply your makeup. I think that is key it's so important. Usually what I'll do is I'll get out of the shower, I do my skincare routine, I let my skincare set down while I dry my hair. Then I go back and I apply my sunscreen. So a good 10 to 15 minutes at least after applying my last skincare product, then I'll put this on. Then rather than just put my foundation right on top of this, I wanna let it sit another 10 to 15 minutes. So I'll do my brows, I'll do my eye makeup, anything that I can do that's not complexion, that's what I'll do. Or like if I'm styling my hair, I'll curl or flat iron it. I'll just do all of that beforehand. And I find that even with the greasier, thicker formulas, if you let them sit a good, like I said, 10 to 15 minutes, they didn't end up pilling under makeup. So that's my best tip for avoiding that situation. So anyway, guys, this was a lot of fun. Like I said, very eye-opening. I learned a lot from doing this and I hope you guys did too. And I wanna thank you all, not only for watching this video, but also if you watched all of the different sunscreen shorts that I did throughout the month of June, I really appreciate it so much. And also if you're new here, I hope you'll take a minute and hit the subscribe button before you go if you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all in my next one. Take care. Bye.